possessed by the demon cop, the unstoppable force of evil. It was a dark and stormy night when Officer Jackson received a call about a disturbance at an old abandoned factory on the outskirts of town. He didn't know what to expect, but he grabbed his flashlight and gun and headed towards the factory. As he approached the entrance, he saw a figure in the shadows. It was a demon with red eyes and sharp claws. The demon smiled wickedly and said, Welcome, Officer Jackson. I've been waiting for you. Officer Jackson tried to run, but the demon was too fast. It grabbed him by the neck and slammed him against the wall. The officer struggled to breathe as the demon spoke to him. You humans think you can stop us demons, but you can't. We are too powerful. We can possess your bodies. We can control your minds. And we can make you do our bidding. The demon then possessed Officer Jackson's body and began to wreak havoc on the town. It killed innocent people and caused destruction everywhere it went. The townspeople were terrified and called for backup. A team of police officers arrived, armed with guns and ready to take down the demon, but they were no match for its supernatural strength. One by one, they fell victim to the demon's wrath. The demon laughed as it tore through the town, causing chaos and destruction. It seemed invincible, unstoppable, and no one knew how to defeat it. But then, a group of brave civilians, who had been studying demonology, stepped forward to challenge the demon. They knew that they had to perform a ritual to send the demon back to hell. They gathered together and began chanting in Latin. The demon tried to stop them. But they were too powerful. As the chanting grew louder, the demon's grip on Officer Jackson's body began to weaken. Suddenly, the demon was sucked back into hell, and Officer Jackson was free from its possession. The town was saved, but the memory of that terrifying night would stay with them forever. They knew that there were demons out there, and that they were not to be underestimated. As the chanting ceased, Officer Jackson dropped to the ground, gasping for breath. His eyes were wild with terror, and he was covered in sweat. He couldn't remember anything that had happened since the demon had possessed him. The civilians rushed to his side and helped him to his feet. They explained what had happened and assured him that the demon was gone. Officer Jackson couldn't believe what he had heard. He had always thought that demons were just a myth. A story told to scare children, but now he had seen one with his own eyes. And he knew that they were very real. As the group made their way back to the police station, Officer Jackson couldn't shake the feeling that something was still watching him. He kept looking over his shoulder, expecting to see the demon lurking in the shadows. When they arrived at the station, the chief of police was waiting for them. He had heard about the demon's rampage and was eager to know what had happened. The civilians explained that they had performed a ritual to send the demon back to hell. But they warned the chief that there could be more demons out there, waiting to cause havoc. The chief was skeptical, but he agreed to let the group investigate further. He assigned Officer Jackson to work with them hoping that he could provide some insight into what had happened. Over the next few days, the group researched demonology and studied the history of the town. They discovered that there had been several other cases of demon possession over the years, but they had always been dismissed as mental illness or drug-induced psychosis. The more they learned, the more they realized that the town was a hotbed of demonic activity. They began to suspect that there was a powerful demon hiding somewhere in the town, controlling the other demons and using them to do its bidding. They decided to conduct a stakeout of the town, hoping to catch the demon in the act. They set up surveillance cameras and watched the streets, looking for any sign of demonic activity. As the night wore on, they saw nothing out of the ordinary, but then, they heard a low growling sound coming from a nearby alleyway. They rushed to investigate, but when they arrived, they found nothing. 
Suddenly, they heard a piercing scream coming from a nearby apartment building. They raced inside, guns drawn, and found a woman lying on the floor, bleeding from multiple wounds. She had been attacked by a demon, and it had left her for dead. The group rushed to her aid, but it was too late. She died in their arms. Her last words a warning about the demon that had killed her. The group realized that they were dealing with a powerful and malevolent demon, one that was not content to hide in the shadows. It was attacking innocent people, and it had to be stopped. They spent the next few days gathering information and studying the demon's behavior. They learned that it had a weakness, salt. Demons were repelled by salt, and it could be used to create a barrier to keep them at bay. They decided to use this knowledge to their advantage. They would lure the demon into a trap using salt to create a barrier that it couldn't cross. They would then perform a ritual to send it back to hell. The plan was risky, but it was their only chance. They set up the trap in an abandoned warehouse on the edge of town, hoping that the demon would be attracted to the salt. As they waited, their nerves were frayed. They knew that if the demon got loose, it would be unstoppable. They could only hope that their plan would work. Suddenly, they heard a loud crashing sound coming from outside. They rushed to investigate, but as they stepped outside, they saw the demon standing in front of them, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly fire. The demon had somehow sensed their trap and had come to destroy them. It let out a terrible roar, and the group knew that they were in for a fight for their lives. They drew their weapons and prepared to fight. The demon charged at them, its claws outstretched, and they opened fire. The bullets bounced off its skin like pebbles, and the group knew that they were in trouble. As the demon closed in on them, they realized that their plan had failed. They had underestimated the demon's strength, and now they were paying the price. One by one, the group fell to the demon's claws. Officer Jackson watched in horror as his comrades were torn apart. Their bodies mangled beyond recognition. He knew that he was next, and he prepared to make his final stand. He drew his gun and aimed it at the demon, hoping to at least take it down with him. But before he could fire, he felt a sudden surge of power coursing through his body. He looked down and saw that his skin was turning black his eyes glowing with the same otherworldly fire as the demon. The demon had possessed him, just like it had possessed the others. But this time, it was different. Officer Jackson felt the demon's power flowing through him, and he realized that he could control it. With a sudden burst of energy, he lunged at the demon, his claws extended. The demon was caught off guard and Officer Jackson was able to sink his claws into its flesh. The demon let out a terrible shriek, and Officer Jackson knew that he had it on the ropes. He continued to attack, using the demon's own power against it. Finally, with a burst of flame, the demon disappeared, banished back to the depths of hell. Officer Jackson collapsed to the ground, exhausted but triumphant. He knew that he was forever changed. He had been touched by the demon's power, and he could never go back to being a normal police officer. But he also knew that he had saved the town, and maybe even the world, from the demon's wrath. And that, in the end, was all that mattered. As the dust settled and the demon's remains disappeared, Officer Jackson looked around at the destruction that the demon had caused. The town was in shambles, and many lives had been lost. He knew that he would be held responsible for the loss of his fellow officers and the damage to the town, but he couldn't bring himself to care. He had been changed by the demon's power, and he knew that he could never go back to his old life. He began to hear whispers in his mind. Voices that he knew were not his own. They were the voices of demons, calling out to him, tempting him with power beyond his wildest dreams. At first, 
He tried to ignore them, but they grew stronger and more insistent with each passing day. He could feel the darkness inside of him growing, threatening to consume him. As the weeks turned into months, Officer Jackson became increasingly reclusive. He stopped going to work and stopped talking to his friends and family. He spent his days locked away in his apartment, listening to the whispers in his mind. One night, he received a visit from a group of police officers. They had been sent to check on him to make sure that he was all right. But when they entered his apartment, they found something far more terrifying. Officer Jackson was no longer human. His body had been twisted and deformed by the demon's power. His eyes glowed with a malevolent light, and his skin was black as coal. The officers tried to subdue him, but he was too strong. He attacked them with a fury that they had never seen before. They were no match for his otherworldly strength, and one by one, they fell to his claws. In the end, only one officer survived, badly injured but alive. He limped away from the apartment, terrified and shaken to his core. The demon had returned, this time in the form of Officer Jackson, and there was nothing that anyone could do to stop him. 